I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Got pulled over by the cops today. Good times. What city? Hollywood. Oh. <laughs> Go on. Hollywood, uh, well, I didn't even really get pulled over. I just got that uh, roll your window down. We're going to have a talk at the stoplight. You got the flat, the red lights. You got the no, flowers. no, slid up next to me. Oh, he slid up next to me. Give me the, give me the roll the window down. I try that with hot chicks every once in a while. They don't oh, go yeah. for it. Yeah, then they call the police. Then I flash my fake badge. Yeah, uh, yeah. I got. You see, here's. Why not? Uh, uh, keep going. Well, I it was. Uh, <laughs> the guy want to know how many uh, dangerous and illegal lane changes I was planning on making, like in the next quarter mile or so, because when I drive. I just know you're not a smart ass, so what'd you say back? Oh, well, <laughs> no, I, I immediately went into kiss ass uh, mode. You got to kiss ass, everybody. Let me tell you something. Everybody, please listen. They do these specials once in a while, how to, how to beat a ticket, how to get a cop not to write you a ticket. Yeah. Best way to get a cop not to write you a ticket is to make him not want to write you a ticket because you seem like a nice guy. Well, I, I have found also that they hate excuses. You got to say... There is no excuse for my behavior. Yeah, I was you're, wrong. You're right. Well, but but it, this still falls under the heading of... Kiss ass. Yeah. yeah. It, it, here's what I mean. If you have to discipline somebody, and oftentimes we all get in this position where you have to tell somebody they can't uh, get in line or they got to go to the back of the line or they can't come in or they can't do this or they can't come back without their ticket stub or whatever you do, Drew, when you do that uh, uh, mercy killing stuff you do at the hospital or whatever it is. Nobody wants to do something they don't want to do to someone they like. Right. They'd much, it's much easier to yes. do it to an a-hole. Right. And you're looking for an ex excuses emotionally to do it. Right. So they're just, they're just hoping that you do something. Yeah. And uh, so going to, going to butt-kissing mode, unless you get pulled over in Burbank, in which case you're getting a ticket anyway because it's just... They're just raising money over there, so just uh, just don't even, don't even kiss ass because you'll get both. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. So anyway... Uh, so I went in ass kiss mode, but but uh, here's my problem: is I drive uh, with a certain vengeance, which is if, if somebody's getting in my way and giving me a prom and dragging their ass, I go around them aggressively. That's mostly on the freeway. Trying to make you, a be, point. Be fair to yourself. You do it yeah, on yeah. the freeway. Mostly. But this 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 happened to me on Hollywood Boulevard. Oof. I, I just did. I did two uh, like crazy zigzag acceleration uh, moves, and then missed missed the light as I was accelerating, and had to like almost lock the brakes up. And and, and then the guy you're passing drives up next. <laughs> then then yes, I always love that one. <laughs> then I noticed out of the corner of my eye, a black and white just parked oh. right next to me, and I'm thinking to myself, boy, I wonder if, how much of what I just did he saw. I hope if it was five percent, he's going to arrest me. Then he does the window thing, and I'm thinking, I bet he saw some of that. Then, uh, then came the question about how much uh, weaving and uh, illegal driving I was planning on doing. I thought I told him that was it. Did a little ass kissing. What'd you say? I just, just give you know, general, time. general. You look certainly nice. Uh, then, then he said, uh, then he said, uh, give me, uh, give me a reason why I shouldn't uh, write you a ticket. And uh, I just said because I'm an asshole. And uh, and uh, he just he just laughed. And his buddy went, oh, you see it on TV or something. So that was it. That was good. Uh, All right. That just gives me more more fuel to drive that way, then, Drew. Oh, no kidding. All right. Should we uh, take some calls? Sure. Why not? No guests tonight. Yeah. We, we could go and talk about high school football. I, 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 saw something, I saw something on TV tonight that uh, they used to do in movies that they don't do anymore. You oh. know, we look for the stuff yeah, they don't yeah. do anymore. Yeah. Buddy of mine brought up the other day the cold shower. Don't hear about the cold shower anymore. Yeah. Time to take a cold shower. Guy's got to take cold showers woman's getting right up to the point with this lady but then she shuts him down he's got to take a cold shower yeah. that's been replaced by beating off right. i believe but here's what they don't do that, in that, movies by the way was a euphemism for beating off i was watching that i got home tonight i was watching that schwarzenegger movie uh, commando yeah and there's that part where uh, they they hit him with the dart and by the way drew do you get knocked out the second you get hit with a dart the well, second 
It, it, only if it's coming out of like a long bamboo tube and that's uh, hit you in the neck. No, no. Shot, <laughs> shot in the sternum with the dart, you know, out of the pistol. <laughs> and I just fall over. It's like, don't you clutch yourself for a second? Doesn't, does your breathing change? Like, Listen, just you, you immediately, the, immediately when the dart hits there's you. There's nothing like that. There's nothing exists that it way. It has to go intravenously. It has to go right into a large vein or and they, you can't do that. So I was saying these movies, it's like the guy pulls the pistol out, yeah. holds it to him, and it says, uh, have a nice, have a nice sleep, boom, and the guy's out before, before he hits the ground. No, oh, everything in film is true. So. All right, well, they're moving it along. So when Schwarzenegger wakes up, he's chained to the table, sees this old Vietnam vet buddy of his, and he's like, he's like, McBride, I thought you were, and the guy goes, dead. And I realized they don't do that in movies anymore where the guy goes, I thought you were. And the other guy finishes right, with dead. Right. They used to do that in every third action movie. Yeah. Not anymore. Now they let him finish the sentence. It's a little uncomfortable beat. They go, I thought you were. And they, uh, uh, dead. But the guy, the guy started the sentence, finishes it. Mm. No, is that true? Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Good one. Laughing time is over. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic? Hey, you're not Miss. Oh, man. What was that all about? Started right off with, uh, with, with some vulgarities. Jim? Jim? There you are. Jim? There he is. There he is. Yeah, yeah, that was late. Anderson's fault. That I don't want to. Anderson's fault. I don't care. Don't want to talk to dudes. <sighs> Ksenia? Ksenia. That's pretty Hi. good. Um, yeah, I'm in the gay straight lines at my school. Mm -hmm. You're what? I'm in the Gay Straight Alliance at my school. Gay Straight Alliance? Yeah. It's it's like, a, it's coming together of the gays and the straights. No. <laughs> well, yeah. It's like a club. We try to like raise awareness and stuff. Gay Straight Alliance. Got so it. Gays and straights? Gays and straights. It's um, GLBTQ squared. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Is this a <laughs> private school? No, it's um, public. Oh, man. They got to they gotta get those vouchers going. This is a you know, calling from San Francisco. Uh, in the area, yeah. All right. You're 14? Yeah. Nice. Listen, shouldn't they be teaching you goddamn kids to fill out checks and envelopes and things like that instead of the I gay and straight it. alliance? All right, yeah. so what, what's going on? What's your question? Oh. Well, I want to go to this event um, for the GSAs, and I want to see if it's like... Gay and straight alliance? Huh? Mm -hmm. And, my, I, I mean, it's like from early morning to, like, late evening. Yeah. Now you're 14. Oh, yeah. I don't care who it's for, they're going to have an issue with it. Exactly. It so could be for I, the uh, sort of the, no, they would the let church me go. alliance. They would let me go, but they're, but they're pretty homophobic. Like, I just told them about the GSA, and they're like, why would they have that? What is that? You know? Well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you lesbian? I'm bisexual. You're bisexual. You're a lesbian. And Drew, please. And you told your parents about the gay straight alliance? Well, I vaguely mentioned it. I was like, because my friends are present, and I was like... Well, now, what do you mean? What do you mean? You're bisexual at fourteen? How do you know what you are at fourteen? I don't know. Just, I've gone out with girls. I've gone out with guys, and yeah. Uh, okay. All right. And I know. I know. Okay. And your parents? My parents. I vaguely mentioned. I was like, yeah, my friend runs this club, and she wants me to join. They were like, I don't think you should join. Why would they have that sort of thing at school? And yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Is this you sanctioned do. by the school, the Gay Straight Alliance? Yeah, yeah. So you join if you want, and if you don't want, you don't. Well, I see, understand. Because I want to go to this, and I just don't know what to call it. What, what's, uh, what's the event? It's um, for all, like, GSAs, because there's, like, a network of them in schools, and you go, and they, like, teach you, oh, like... it's a coordinate. huge glory hole event. What do they teach you? Um, like, how to better run your club, because we're having issues. Like, our clubs are, like, not, like, working well. And Why was the problem? Well, there's not many members. A lot of people are, like, afraid to join and stuff like that. Good. Right. What do you need one for? Just do your goddamn homework and go to college, would you? I do. Oh, my God. I'm a good student. All right. But, I, I mean, I, I don't want to, like, lie to them and go, yeah, we're going to the movies and shopping from, like... No, it sounds like you're an assertive person. You've already sort of breached the topic with them. Your orientation has nothing to do with this. It's a group that you sort of admire and you're just your friends. What do you mean in? her her orientation has nothing to do with it? She's gay and straight. She's yeah, both she, of them. She doesn't know what she is at this point. Oh, look, she's nice screwing not with her parents. Why, why are you screwing with your parents? I'm not screwing. I'm so not screwing with my parents. You're not? No. You love you're a lesbian. No, I'm not. <laughs> you love your parents? Yeah. You respect them? Yeah. They're good to you? Yeah. Mm. What do they do? They both work too much? Mm. My mom lost her job a little while ago. All right. Your, your dad, what's he do? 
Um, he's a professor at Stanford University. All right. All right. Everything's good. Yeah. And he, he's the one, I'm sure, they, I'm sure they instilled these values in you from a young age. And now it's payback time. Now it's, <laughs> it's, coming, it's coming to term. <laughs> All right. My mom, like, took me to the parade uh, on Castro and stuff. The gay parade, okay. Yeah. All yeah, right, cool. listen, they, All right. they, listen, they but cannot. cool with me, though. That, okay. that is BS, rather. They cannot hold one's, you to one standard and the rest of the world to another. That's ridiculous. You go ahead and, it's your, you know, you. But she's, values, four, she's 14. Maybe they don't want her gone for 14 hours. That, that's what I told her. I said I, I said she wouldn't. they wouldn't be happy if she went to a church group for 14 hours. But she said, no, no, they're cool with that kind of thing. So fine. Search us up. Go do it. You have friends. You, have, you value these things. Those are your values. Those, this is what adolescence is, is deciding who you are and what your values are. Mm -hmm. That's it. Go on. I, I, by the way, don't think she's, she's bisexual. She just sort of declared I think she kind of wishes she, yeah, she was. wishes she was, exactly. Because she's hanging around a bunch of fruitcakes, and she wishes she had some, some angle. And it's easy for a girl to sort of technically call herself bisexual because she has to do is screw around with a chick a couple of times after a few wine coolers, and now she keeps her bisexual card going for another mm -hmm. year, but they're not really that into it. But she wears it like a badge of yeah. honor because she's in San Francisco, and she's yeah. with a bunch of progressive yeah. folks over there. All right, good. I don't Listen, I don't like any of those groups, by the way. I don't like you don't, you don't I don't like groups. I don't like any groups, and I don't like any groups at school. And and you I especially I, don't like groups that write letters. I don't like groups that that uh, use Take vowels, <laughs> that write letters. I don't like any of that stuff. And I don't like that there's so much stuff at school that kids aren't learning. It, they should be learning just life fundamental stuff, just filling out how to address an envelope properly. Football. Do it for do it for a whole year. Mm. How to fill out a check. All the I, I didn't learn anything in high school, except for ceramics. Jim. Yes. What's up? Um, I was uh, in the medicine cabinet at my girlfriend's house the other day, and I found a prescription that's not hers. And I was curious on what it is and if I should be concerned. It's not hers. No. Doesn't it have her name on it. No, actually, the label's um, pretty worn out, like it's an old. Pill capsule or whatever. So it could be hers. It could be yes. All right. What is it? And it's uh, I can't pronounce it, but it's S K E L A X I N. Yeah, that's a scalaxin. That's a muscle relaxant. It's no big deal. It's nothing to be worried about. Kind of weird. How old is she? She's nineteen. Has she had any sports injuries or back problems or anything? No. It's kind of a weird thing for a nineteen-year-old to have in her drawer, but it's not addictive and it's not a serious medicine. It's not very strong or anything like no, that. No, the muscle relaxes. What are you worried about, Jim? Well, <laughs> it's actually, it's Tim. Oh, Tim? Yeah, well, I mean, it wasn't, it's not hers, and I just want to make sure she wasn't. Well, you, you don't know it's not hers. He, listen, he's right. One of, the, one of the ways you can learn more about anyone than almost any other way is to look in their medicine cabinet. <laughs> you really, you learn a lot about someone, you find out what medicine uh, is. I know, but he doesn't know it's not her medicine. I know. It doesn't matter if it is or not. Hers or not. It's a, it's a, it's a lightweight, relatively medicine. All right. It's a little weird for a 19-year-old. I mean, why 19-year-olds shouldn't be taking anything, frankly. Okay. Well, why don't you ask her about it, Tim? I will do that. There yeah, you go. That, don't tell her you're snooping. Well, I wasn't. I was actually in there getting something, and I just happened to see it. And All right. All right. I guess I was. All right. But that, listen, <laughs> Tim, don't worry about it in general. Don't think so much. All right. Thanks. You're fine. She's fine. It's all good. All right. Good, good. times. Yeah. I'm going to hang up the phone. I'll never think about you again. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So it's like, in a way, maybe you don't even exist. You ever yeah, think about that, Drew? No, they existed, I promise. I don't know. I, I know in your world, maybe other people don't exist. But right, are you so do. sure stuff's there when you're not there? Yeah, I'm sure. Convinced. Thoroughly. I've seen evidence. All right. You don't know. You don't know that stuff's there when you're not there. You don't know if your house is there. You don't know if New York is there. People dismantle the set. The, 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 the man. Listen, I, the same guy that I don't claim to have all the answers, Drew. I just ask the tough questions. Eric? Yeah. You're 20? Yeah, Derek, bro. Oh. Hey, hold on a second. Hey. hey too many. Hey, hey, listen to me. If I don't want any more Tims who are Jims or Erics that are Derek. More girls. Find we out need more women. I don't want any guys, but find out their goddamn names and write it down on the goddamn screen. And whatever I call you when we punch you up, that's your name. So next time it's Bill. 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 That's right. Good. Billy. Billy Bob. Hi, Billy. What's up? Oh, God. All right. Uh, I can't, can't no, stand, come on. I can't oh, come stand on. him already. Oh. I just want to talk to some women. Guys are so bad. Uh -huh. Laura? Hi. You're 14. What's up? Yes. Um, I've been taking Ritalin since I was in first grade, and I wanted to know how it worked. 
It's basically like an amphetamine, though it doesn't have any of the brain toxic effects that amphetamine does. And it has a paradoxical effect on people with ADD and ADHD, is when you are sort of sped up and hyperactive and have difficulty concentrating, paradoxically, these stimulants bring you down and help you concentrate. Okay. So, something you really ought to think about getting off of when you're about 18, or by the time you're 18. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, good times, though, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. She, she doesn't exist anymore. In fact, some, there's some evidence that Ritalin may have brain protective effect against things like cocaine. Well, give me some of that. Derek. Yeah. What's up? What's up, man? Man, I just, I got a little problem with my girlfriend, dude. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to do with her. She's like, right now, she, she might be pregnant, but like, I'm not sure by who because she's been going to see this guy, like, back and forth. But, like, not really being with him, you know what I mean? Just, like, every, like, a couple times a month. She came home with hickeys a couple of times, you know? I'm just, like, me, like an idiot, I'm, I'm, I'm still with her. But I, since she's, you know, might be pregnant, I don't want to just leave her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it might be my kid. Mm -hmm. Also, I really don't know what to do at this point. Mm -hmm. How old is she? She's 19. She so doing any drugs or anything? I know, dude. Yeah. Not for, like, four years. Mm -hmm. Doctor, dude. Yeah. And um, what are you doing, dude? Not much, man. Trying to go to school, getting everything done right now. Mm -hmm. My life. Junior college? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Hold on, Drew. You can uh, knock me over the feather. Spatula. Scrape, you Scrape me ground. right off the ground. Uh, what are you studying over there in junior college? Do recording arts. Mm-hmm. Why? What do you do with that? Become an engineer? Uh, no, nah, I want to be a producer. What what kind of stuff do you want to produce? Music? Yeah. Um, I'm going to guess classical. <laughs> no. 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 Jazz? Hip-hop. Hip-hop? Yeah, hip-hop. All right. Hey, can you do a little beatbox for us? Nah. Nah, I don't do the little beatboxes. Okay. Wish we talked to Eric before I did that Crank Yankers thing. Yeah. He could have given us a whole yeah. list of hip-hop words. Uh, it's not Eric. It's Derek, Eric, by the way. Biden. Yeah. All right, so listen, uh, Derek. Yeah. Uh, how far along is she pregnancy-wise? Dude, she probably will be like a month now. She's a month. Okay. Yeah. Let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you the uh, the bad news and the good news. Yeah. Uh, the bad news is is uh, if she does have the kid and you do get a uh, paternity test and you do find out that uh, that uh, you're the parent, you're on the hook. Yeah. For that. The good news is is all successful people in the rap industry <laughs> have a couple of illegitimate kids. So you're well on your way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's important not to get married to her though and to yeah. uh, crank out a couple more kids yeah. from a few other hoes. See what yeah. I'm saying? Well, I don't know if the kids mine or not. This dude's Puerto Rican, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well then I guess, I guess you're gonna find out though. All right, but I don't know. Is that focus? No, like, no, no. It's just that Derek. Are you sure he, he? No, Derek. There's so much in this relationship. Hold on. So what? What's? What's your nationality? Dude, I'm Swedish. Uh, okay. Right, well, that's bogus. Now. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. it's bogus. Okay. All right. We we we'll see you in hell. <laughs> uh, all right, dude. What? All right. <laughs> the recording arts. All right. If the guy is a, uh, if it's in fact a true story and the guy's Puerto Rican and he's Swedish, you should be able to tell. All right. Be that as it may, if it's also a real story, this you know, very, very obvious and healthy situation with the girlfriend that's screwing other people, yeah. he's undoubtedly screwing other guys. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of. The only part that didn't down. sound bogus yeah. about that whole thing was the junior college part. Yeah. And I'm not even sure he was up to junior college. That That's sort of what struck me. It's like, really? You think there's, you, you think there's like a, there's like a triple A. Of like like you know, there's the major leagues. There's like a pee wee college. Minor leagues and this triple A. Yeah, like a midget college. <laughs> college for midgets? No, but like under junior. Right. Bantam college. There is there really is no college under junior college, Drew. There's there's high school, but there's many high schools that I, I would uh, argue are above the junior college level. The only thing that makes high schools uh, a more learning uh, rich environment is you actually have attendance and things. Oh, yeah. You have ju to show up. Junior college is high school with no no supervision. Hmm. Come, you know, we ride a motorcycle onto campus and s smoke cigarettes at the, uh, you know, under the awning during a nutrition, then split when you want. So that that's, uh, so it's, it's, it's prison with no guards. Leanne? Yes. You're 21? Yes. What's up? 
Well, um, I've been with a guy for about eight months when we lived together, and um, just recently it's gotten really bad. He has a bad porn habit. Mm-hmm. He um, basically wants to do that all the time, just jack off to porn, never wants to have sex. Uh, big deal. You're Get fast. Back. Oh, true, please. It's true, right? <laughs> what? Are you a big gal? No, I'm not that big. What size are you? Um, let me see. I weigh 160 pounds. I'm 5'8". Hold on a second. Let me do some... Uh, You're overweight. True, please. Yes, I am about three pounds overweight. I was on bed rest this past summer. Why? Hold on. What my bed rest for? Um, actually, my doctors still don't know, but I have um, some condition with my um, uterus. Ooh. Were you sexually abused growing up? Um, yes, I was. There's Hold that condition say. with your uterus. How did I know that magically? Oh, yeah. Overweight with a painful uterus equals sexual abuse. Let me... Uh, let me just do the radio math. Five eight one sixty. Two three four five seven. Uh, I got uh, five five and uh, fifteen sixteenths and uh, one seventy seven. Could be overweight. <clears throat> All right. Well, now hold on. Let's get to Leanne. Leanne. So Leanne. Who sexually abused you? My brother. Oh boy. Did, did you tell your doctors about that history? Um, yeah, I believe they know. No, you've got to make that explicitly clear to them. That's a very important part of this pelvic pain thing you've got. Okay. Okay, that, that, that puts it in a different context. Okay. And you may have to spend less time in bed if, if they know yeah. about that history, and the treatments will be kind of different. And, and well, I don't trust this boy for any years now. Before, <laughs> before, I looked up to him like the Messiah because all the porn he watched. But now that you come from this troubled past, I worry about your decision-making as an adult. Is he addicted to anything else, or had he been? Um, just to drugs and porn. <laughs> just just tr- <laughs> <laughs> drugs and porn. Just, just drugs. No, nothing else, just drugs. Okay. Yeah, he's right. not. Yeah. He doesn't do that stuff anymore. He does smoke weed, but it's yeah. mainly porn. All right. Well, here's what happens when people that particularly uh, stimulant, well, I guess more often than that, in my experience, opiate addicts, too. Uh, when they get off those things and try to get by on marijuana maintenance, they it's not enough. Okay. They they will do they will start engaging in sort of criminal type activity. They'll start they'll start stealing stuff and they'll start getting going on the sexual addictions. They have that part of their brain needs to be stimulated in in extra physiologic ways mm. after they've triggered the disease of addiction, so unless they get into recovery programs. He's chipping with the porn. He's chipping with the porn. Yeah, he's replacing it with the porn. What what uh, what kind of porn does he like? Mainly internet porn. I, yeah, like I don't mind looking at it with him, but. Just mm-hmm. I don't, can't do it all the time like he does. In, internet porn isn't really a type of porn. It's just porn well, delivered via the internet. Lesbians, just girls on girls. Mm-hmm. Girl on girl. So okay. that, that's the type, I see. Yeah. Very good. Well, uh, all right. Man, uh, he, he's going to get worse with this, too. There's going to be more consequences from it. He's going to spend more money. on it. There's going to be a lot of things that happen because of it. it, it, it he needs to get going. If you, if, you know, there's, there's a lot going on here, obviously. You need to make sure your doctors attend to the fact that you're a victim and a survivor of sexual abuse. Number two, if you want to get him motivated to make change, one of the things that I've found more than anything else gets people who have addiction problems to get going is for the the partner to get involved in a codependency program like Al-Anon, something like that, and get a sponsor and work the steps. Hey, he doesn't think he no, has you, a problem. You, you getting a sponsor in a codependency program, yeah. that may motivate him to make change. Well, what's this guy do for a living? He um, runs a press. Oh, I see. He works at a print printing place? shop. Yeah. Printing shop. Okay. This this guy's a loser. Plus, he's probably got ink all over his penis. <laughs> right? No. I just you know I get really upset and sometimes like I break down emotionally and I don't know if it's yeah. because I um, when he rejects me and I don't know if it's because I was abused when I was little that I'm so dependent on it. No, it's that what you do when you've been victimized is you create relationships that reenact those traumas and you, everything becomes that trauma over and over and over again and we don't really really know the biology behind that why humans do that but that's what we All do. Right, so we're sorry for what happened to you but you're an adult now you got to get some help for it and I don't necessarily trust this guy in the big picture. No, you, once she goes to codependency program she'll be thinking hey, what, the hell, what am I doing with this guy? Right. Treat me like crap. I need something more. And that's it. And he'll and he will either get better or that'll be that. No. Yeah. Well, good times. We're gonna take ourselves uh, a good little time. break. Good times, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Take a little break. When we come back, I'm gonna talk to uh, some guy who wants to know some fart story about uh, farting in a car. Hmm. Whatever. Yeah. After this. <laughs> Buddy, love line, madam. That's 
Thanks, Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what there, kitties. Got myself a 5,000... <coughs> no. Yeah, for... Oh, Jesus. All right. Shelly? Hi. You're 20? Yeah, I'm 20. I felt like the show was lacking some farting humor the past little while, so mm-hmm. I just wanted you to uh, share that story. You've said it on a, a number of times about uh, you were driving in your car and you farted, and uh, you started wafting the smell towards your face, and your girlfriend was just disgusted. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's good. That, that you've now described about 400 experiences Adam's had in the car. They're of a similar oh, yeah. nature. Right. Mm-hmm. So what was specific about this one? Um, what did you say? You said... No, I know this story. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. That's a good story. Yeah, I was uh, driving along down uh, Moore Park Boulevard over there in uh, the Toluca Lake area some yeah. years back with the old lady in the car yeah. and uh, blew some righteous gas. Did the, did the hand flap the cup? It's the ladle. You're, you're right, like right. taking, you're take, it yeah, taking the heavier gas out of your... To the soup yeah. soup ladling up yeah, toward the face. To, to appreciate, to get the, the bouquet. Right. To bring the bouquet up, yeah. She was uh, disgusted. Like, you know, women don't like farting, and they sort of have disdain toward it, and they put a face on, but then sometimes, but when they see this sort of farting and the wafting, they get they get disgusted, yeah. and she, she said... Oh my God! Do you, do you have to? Do you have to flap? Do you have to cup your hand and flap it up toward your face that way? And uh, I just looked at her, super straight and serious. I said, uh, "You want me to put my head between my legs while I'm driving a motor vehicle? Is that that seems smart to you? Does that seem like a good idea?" Okay, honey, use your brain. She, on the other hand, tells the story of you uh, letting loose at night. Mm-hmm. And her freaking out, and you, you know, batting the club. Oh, yeah, that's my move. And, and her, her losing it, and you going, oh, baby, you're just trying to impress me. <laughs> <laughs> trying to make you feel good. I tell you, you know, my latest move is uh, is uh, <laughs> skipping. I do a little, skip a little rope before I come in here tonight. Yeah, and, Blow, uh, blowing some nice gas when I'm skipping rope. But that's the... Right, the, and you get, you get the cadence going. Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, get, you, get, uh, you get six or seven... Rounds off, uh, <laughs> off of that. that. My clip six seven. Wait a minute, wait a minute, with Shelley. I don't know what my uh, I don't know what my record is, but uh, like hiking it up the stairs. Oh yeah, how many uh, flights? Well, I got a lot of stairs to get to my house. Oh, so oh, yeah, that whole bank of stairs. Now there. sometimes I'll do I'll do, you know I'll just do each individual step you know. Yeah. But then sometimes I'll skip a step. It's like. Right. You know that's the bigger step yes, part. Yes, yeah. yeah. Shelley. Yeah. Hey, All right. There's we, your fart humor, baby. You're up, you're up in Vancouver, British Columbia? Yeah. I was up there last week. I know. You know what? I, I was the one who called and asked uh, when you were going to be in Whistler, and I was there the same time, but, like, I didn't know where you were, and, it's you know. It snowed the whole time. Yeah. Well, actually, no, I don't know. I came back down. I went. I was in L.A. for a while. It I was is all over. so beautiful up there. It is un- Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, and oh, it's been so nice this Wait, week. You live up there? Yeah. Oh, man. It's a big town. I get mad at people that live in really nice, picturesque places full time. Uh. You ever drive around like you're driving up the hills, you're going to Lake Arrowhead, you stop, you see a high school. It's like <laughs> Lake Arrowhead High School. It's up at the top of the mountain. Right. It's got look classroom looks like a big ski chalet or something. And you think I always look at that and I go, how exquisitely sane must the kids who go there be? Like you just. Right. You're sitting there looking out your school window. You're looking at deer. You're sucking up, like, uh, crystal clear mountain air all the time. Mm-hmm. There's no violence. No, no shootings. No no smog. No earthquakes. It, it must be, and in a way, it must be weird to go to a place that's like, like, where your, your life will never be as good as high school. But they probably keep it about the same. Really? But, I mean, eventually you got to move down the hill, and you, 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 may, you may settle in Burbank. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it'll be bad. Bad times. Like, my high school is just a bunch of black top and tilt-up concrete. Everything was uh, sort of drab green and gray, and it was it's sort of sort of done like a prison. So then when you left, you were happy that you were gone. They, gotta have a, they should have an ounce of that woven into high schools. Yeah. Like, you should be... Like, I know this sounds a little morbid, but all the time I saw that Columbine footage, I was like, my God, the place is three stories. with The, the library looks like the Crystal Cathedral. Like, yeah. this is an amazing facility. Yeah. 
Hey, I, I wouldn't have wanted to go home. I, I had a kind of high school that you, you sort of felt like you were here happy to escape. Melanie? Yeah. You're 21? Yeah. What's up? Um, I have a question. My boyfriend and I have been together for about eight months. Uh-huh. And every time we have sex, he can only go for like four minutes top. Mm-hmm. You're 21, right? Yeah. How old is he? He's 31. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I just want to know if there's something wrong with me or something wrong with him. No, that's just his, his why would rhythm. Some, why would something be wrong with you? I don't know. It's just every guy I've been with has been like that. Has been four minutes? Yeah. Maybe that's what most guys are like. Well... <laughs> No, my friends ain't, my my friends say that there's there's ain't like that. Yeah. No, I think I think uh, five to ten minutes is a. Yeah, but but when you when you say four minutes, you mean fast, and maybe it's not even truly a whole four minutes. Maybe it's a couple minutes. Yeah. Like for instance, we just hit the one minute mark on this conversation. Does it seem about that long? No. Does it seem or four it, times that long? Does it seem about four minutes? No, just a little, probably longer than, not even a minute, maybe. Oh, really? Just so, sure. Yeah, really so, so women, women right. cannot estimate All time. Right. All right, so that's just, again, that's them, but you got to kind of work with these guys a little bit. It uh, means you're hot, baby. What can I do to make it better? you got to ugly yourself up a little. you got like a dump acid on your face and <laughs> shave half your head and one of your eyebrows. No, no. <laughs> Swing a hatch around, hit yourself in the back with it. Are you good looking? Well, I'm not bad looking. Mm-hmm. But in a kind of white, trashy way? No. <laughs> I'm about 5'7 and about 120 pounds. Right. But still got a little white trash in you? No. What do you do? What do I do? I'm, I stay home with my kids. How many kids? How many kids? I have two. Two kids? 21? Yeah. Got a 31-year-old boyfriend? Yeah. These I, aren't hit. The not his kids? No. Yeah, that's white trash. How many fathers? <laughs> Just one. Uh, uh, where's he? He's like not in their life. I mean, he's there, but not really. All right, you're still that. You're still sticking with the white trash stuff. What kind of place you live in? I live in. I live in an apartment. All right. Got the uh, burnt uh, orange colored shag carpeting. No, they're brand new. We got the got the burnt orange veneer on the refrigerator though. What color is uh, what color is the carpeting? It is like cream color. Mm, cream. All right. What do you do uh, for money? What do I do for money? I waitress part time. All right. That's all white trash stuff. <laughs> you chew gum? No. All right. Well, I'll deduct a point for that. Ooh. Who's that? Okay. Do you call Are you white trash? <laughs> <laughs> do you? Uh, uh, you waitress part time, but how do you how do you pay all the bills? Two kids. I just I just manage, I guess. But my one daughter's disabled, and I receive disability for her. What Ooh. kind of disability? What's the matter with her? She is really slow. I had her. She was premature. Hmm. How old is she now? She's one. You you can get money for her. They they pay me for her disability every month. But he, what what would you what would she be doing at one? Um, she don't walk or she don't crawl. She just basically don't really do nothing. Is and she blind or deaf or anything? No. Okay. When she's one, usually they expect them to at least crawl. Right. And, and talk. Yeah, I don't want to be you insensitive know. or cruel, but it doesn't seem like you should be able to collect on that until they, you know, until it would be an issue. If they were Would healthy. You, you're saying there needs to be an ability before there's a disability. Yeah, how can you have a disability from a non-ability? Um, <laughs> well, what I mean is, is if, she, uh, if she was a healthy one-year-old, she wouldn't be down by the river doing laundry and milking and, and scrubbing the kitchen floor and helping out around the house. You know what I'm saying? She'd just be lying around. She did receive oxygen for, like, the first six months of her life. Does she have special needs? Do you have to have caretakers or anything? She just got off her oxygen about six months ago. All right. So there's special health care needs and that sort of thing. All right. How much do you get for that? They pay me $552 a month. All right. So that, between that and your waitressing thing? Yeah. And what else can you get? Their their dad pays um, child support. Dad plays child support? All right, baby. What, what does your boyfriend do? He plays tile. 
All right, I'm, I'm telling you, you're, you're making a case for the white trash thing. <laughs> I know you don't want to go for it, but uh, I think I'd come over there and sell it. She lives in Salt Lake City. Are they allowed to have some white trash? Mm-hmm, okay. mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, you excite the guy a lot. He, that's just kind of his clock. Does he give you oral sex? Yeah. He needs to work on that a little bit. Maybe he do, go, Does go. he do a good job on that? He does a very good job on that, but... Okay. Uh, maybe a second <coughs> round with him. Maybe he masturbates beforehand. I was just thinking he needs to pay attention. I think he needs to uh, sort of be... Maybe put on notice gently. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, here, here's what you want, ladies. You want the man at his full potential. Yeah. You want him to try. Yeah, you want him to know, him to understand when there needs to be improvement. Yeah. And, and, and and do his best to impress. Yeah. Because even though sort of genetically or biologically the guy has a certain clock, everyone's born with a certain number on their scrotum sack. For some, it's it's uh, two minutes. For others, it's ten minutes. For me, it's a question mark. But the point is... is That's only since you've been a ninja, though. Yeah. <laughs> you should be trying to focus and do the best... It, it, what you if if but, if your if your sack says two minutes, yeah. you should be the best two minutes in town. But as a woman, you're not doing any favor if you tell the guy you're perfectly satisfied when you're not, because he's not gonna. Right. You know, he feels like he's at his potential then. He's giving her the oral though. Yeah, right. We'll be back. Hey everybody, Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Want to thank you for listening. Don't do that too often, but. Uh, I just uh, thought I would do that. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Let's uh, get back to the phones and speak to uh, Coco. Oh, okay. You know, I want to call you back later, okay? All right. Hey. Mom there? Yeah, hi. Hey. Hey. Coco, 14? thought you were going to call us back later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're 14? Mm-hmm. It says here you're pregnant? Yeah. Six weeks? Um, yeah, from um, my last menstrual period. Not from conception, though. All right, six weeks me Okay, you got a boyfriend. Uh huh. So you, you know, uh, you know whose it is. Yeah. Is this the first time you've been pregnant? Yeah. All right. What's your plan? Um, I don't know. Do your parents know about it? Uh, no, they don't know. Do, do you plan to tell them? What? Do you plan to tell them? Um, eventually. Oh, eventually. So you're gonna have this baby at fourteen. I don't know because what I'm against abortion. What, you're against abortion. What grade are you? Eleven. Mm-hmm. What's your boyfriend's name? Christian. Uh, so, Christian. Yeah. So yeah. what about giving this Put child? him on the phone. Put him on the phone? Yeah. Um, why? Hand, hand it to him. Well, he's not here with me. Yeah, he is. Give it to him. No, he was on the, my cell phone. I'm, I'm smelling bogus. No, oh my God, you know? I don't. This is... All right, anyway. Mm -hmm. Coco. Yeah. Uh, what um, What is your plan here? Are you going to give this child up for adoption if you have it? I, guess, I, I don't know what I'm going to do because, um, I mean, it's my first child, so I really don't want to lose it, but I lose my life on the other side of it because I have my future in front of me. I would have an abortion, but I'm really against it morally. You're religious? Um, no, it's just that I just can't kill something. All right. Mm -hmm. What about adoption? So this child has parents who are sort of ready to be parents and you can get on with your life. Well, I mean, like, I could, but, you know, I want to know my child. It's, it's going to be my child. Yeah, but don't you want the child to get every opportunity in life, including two parents and a stable home and parents are going to afford to raise a child and focus on a child? Yeah, but even if I do have that, you know, my parents are going to be really upset, you know. I haven't been exactly the best daughter. Why? Because um, with my whole thing, so I'm running away, you know, and getting into a lot of trouble. And um, I, I, I'm like involved in a lawsuit right now where I'm trying to get this 19-year-old guy for um, raping me. Why, like, why is that a lawsuit? Why is that just a um, criminal suit? I mean, like, because um, he was 19 and I was um, 13. Yeah, well, yeah, why is it a suit? Why is that just a criminal action? Well, because he kidnapped me, he um, forced um, to have sex with me, because I will, this is another person. Yeah, uh, but shouldn't, aren't the police involved with this? Yeah. Why is that a suit, then? Because my parents wanted to take him to jail. 
Right, right, but you're not trying to get, you're not suing him. No. No? Hold on, I'm on the phone. What happened? Did, were you physically or sexually abused growing up? Um, or no, just, just by this one guy. Just yeah, this but one guy. nothing before that. Mm, not that I know. Your parents still together? Uh, yeah, but they don't love each other. Have you been in and out of psychiatric hospitals? What? Have you been in a psychiatric hospital ever? Um, I mean, I, I've been through a lot of psychiatric treatment. But never been hospitalized? No, uh, they this, they didn't think I was too bad for it. They thought I could still work in the okay. society. Do you still see a therapist or a psychiatrist? Um, no, because my dad thought like I was making it up or something, so he stopped it. Mm-hmm. And where's this guy who uh, raped you? Is he in jail? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, we're still trying to get... um. Like the um, DA, we're still trying to get the DA to approve the case if we're gonna, like. All right. All right. Yeah. Well. All right, man. So uh, I've seen a lot in your uh, 14 years. No, you, 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 you don't want to get an abortion. You're gonna have to tell your parents. Here's the the good part. The good news is is everything's been so chaotic in your life. This is not going to be a big surprise. Yeah. This is all part of. The parents that are dealing with a 14-year-old that have been through this, down this path, are kind of expecting a pregnancy, I would say. So, yeah. Yeah, it's part of the deal. I think they'd almost be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, seriously, Coco, I, I know this sounds like retarded logic, but seriously, if you were like a straight-A student and yeah. captain of the cheerleading... I am a straight-A student. Squad? Yeah. Uh, they can still make that. All right. Yeah. If you were like an A-plus Straight A plus student? Oh, uh, <laughs> no. Like most of the time, yeah. Sometimes they get B's or D's, but mostly a lot of A's. All right. Well, B's and D's does not qualify straight A, okay? Uh -huh. well, maybe she meant heterosexual who yeah. got an A once and there B. You go. There you go. Yes, yeah. When you sprinkle the D's in there, it, it uh, does kind of pull you off the straight A list. But, but it, be that as it may, um, <laughs> you've had your share of trouble in the past, right? Mm -hmm. And. This would, as Drew said, sort of go along in, uh, this would go along with trouble yeah. with a, a, a young a young teenage girl. Yeah, I, I so I, I don't think it's going to be a shock to them. It's not like both your parents are rabbis and you're on the dean's list and, my God, they're shocked yeah. and they're going to disown you. They, they should stick with you. Yeah, I, I, I would I would advise that she go to go down to Planned Parenthood and ask a couple of questions. Yes, you need to get some help from you get support from people who can help guide you in your decision making. If you want to go to Planned Parenthood, that's fine. If you want to go back to your therapist, your psychiatrist, and talk about what's been going on, that would be totally appropriate. But if you really want to do what's right, I think what's right in this situation is giving this child a chance at a decent life, which means adoption. Okay, but here's the here's the deal. You don't have to make a decision tonight right. or even tomorrow. Right. You need to talk to your therapist. You need to talk to the Planned Parenthood people. Yeah. Bring your boyfriend with you. Have a sit down. Uh -huh. Figure it out. Get your ducks in line. And then when you figure out the direction you want to go, do it with the support of these people. Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right. And uh, birth control, birth control, birth oh. control. Morning hey, after we, pill, morning after yes. pill, morning after pill. Eh, maybe we should do a couple minutes of the morning after pill. Go ahead. Um, for some reason, there's confusion about how this pill works. It's your birth control pill, plain old estrogen and or progesterone or just progesterone that you can take up to three days after an unprotected sexual encounter. It prevents a pregnancy from forming. An egg is never released. Sperm never reaches the egg. There's bizarre controversy about this product somehow being an abortion in that it interferes with implantation. The reality is... It doesn't interfere with implantation of a fertilized egg any more than the birth control pill you take before intercourse. The once-a-day pill you would take normally also has a potential to interfere with implantation, but both the pill you take before intercourse and the emergency contraception you take after primarily work by suppressing ovulation, meaning an egg is never released, so there's never a conception. Right. And it would be one of the greatest ways to eliminate abortion in this country. All right. And I'm sure all the people that are uh, against abortion are uh, lining up and getting on board with this. And my question to those of you that have a problem with that, just ask yourself, are you interested in helping kids and stopping abortion? Or are you interested in having kids not have sex? Well, they just want to proselytize. And if you want them not to have sex, that's fine. A different goal. But just say it. Yeah. 
really what that group is interested in in they don't like freebies. They they don't like free here's second, what second chances. Well here's what they don't like. They don't like a life where you get to have sort of indiscriminate sex yeah. with multiple partners and not pay the fiddler. They don't like a life, by the way, and it's the same thing. It's the same religious uh, a holes. They don't like a life where you can go three go go. You can watch uh, football every Sunday and never uh, attend a house of worship. You don't have to, you know, bow at the altar of any any deity. You, somehow they don't like the idea that you just get to live and there's never any consequences. And by the way, this is this is this is the entire this entire you're going to hell thing. Uh. It's like, oh, hey, have a good time. Have a good time. Have a good time with that beer and that joint and your penis out. Have a good time. See you in hell. See you in hell. And that's all they do. They spend their whole life explaining to you how uh, -uh you got to pay the fiddler. You got to, oh, uh, okay. Oh, you don't want to do that? Then then I'll see you in hell. I'll say, we've created this place called hell. Makes us feel better because we're sitting in church all day and doing what's right. Go get this have a hooker. Thank you. We'll be back. Buddy, love line. I'm Adam. That's Doc Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. All right, Drew, ready to rock? Let's go. Let's talk to Matt, who's seventeen. Matt. Yeah. What's Hi, up? How's it going? Good. Oh uh, well, I have a question. It's about um my girlfriend, mm -hmm. and well, like two weeks ago, we were making out, and um, you know, she was you know kissing right between my shoulder and right my between my neck, and she got like a little violent and she basically tore a part of my flesh off with her teeth that's nice and i don't know after that like, she <laughs> she um you know like she wanted you know now she wants to get another step forward you know she wants to give she wants to give me bjs and she wants to get sexually active and stuff like that you know she wants to get me in the bed and you know i was thinking like after the experience i had like where we were making out and she like you know tore a piece of my flesh off uh I don't know what she's going to do. I like the way this guy talks. She wants to get me into bed. Like, yeah. It's yeah. going to take more than that. Yeah, he's got to, to get the rings, sir, diamonds, or... Sir Matt into bed, yeah. Well, His necklace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's the jewelry and the flowers? Uh, uh, well, tore anyway, a piece of your flesh off? Yeah. Sort of accidentally in the course of playing around, or she went in... Yeah, she was... No, it was accident, well, on her part, it was, like, she was just... Accidentally. When you, when you say tore a piece of flesh off, that seems like it would take a little work as far as biting goes. Oh, no, like, she totally, like, she just... You mean she broke your skin? Yeah, she broke my skin with her teeth. Mm-hmm. Totally, like, tore some skin off. Intentionally. Like, yeah. Tore, not, tore well, not intentionally, but, you know, she got a little too into it. Tore skin off, so there's a piece of your skin was in her mouth. Yeah. Like, it's just, uh, it's, not, it's not a whole bunch, but it's, it's just, like, there was a flesh wound and... and, and See, the, the, here's, here's what I'm at here. a bogus quality. Right. What, what, the, the question is here, what's the question? Well, I was yeah. wondering... Like, no, there's no question. You no, know, yeah. he, he should, should. Yeah. should the he question? put a penis in her mouth, but right. that's not a question. She's a biting a, machine. Yeah. It's like uh, having a Rottweiler go down yeah. on you. there's no question. It's not a question. No, I was just wondering, that's like... a statement. How I will be it's, able... The statement is, right, the statement is, this girl bit a piece of flesh off, I'm scared... Yeah, and, and was, tell me I should. Yeah, it's just no question. There's no question. Like, no, I was just wondering, like, how could I, you know, back away from her because I want to break up, and she's a little weird and she's a little crazy. And I'll yeah, now the back now the yeah, filling in. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that's your question. Yeah, how I how could I back off without uh, like, a I, her? I see, I see. <laughs> see, all right, <laughs> all right, we'll break up with her. There you go. All right, all that right. was bogus as can be. Yeah, she may have bit him, may have, actually, but he, there's no purpose to that call. <laughs> Uh, it's hard to tell because our callers are so dumb and they describe things so horribly. But tore a piece of flesh off. Um, Listen, that's part of the bogosity. I, if somebody really questions, like, a girlfriend bit me. It scares me. She's weird. What do you think? Why do you think she did that? What'd she do with it though? She swallow it, spit it out? Oh, listen, he doesn't He's know anything. Already, yeah. Stephanie. Yes. You're 29. Uh huh. What's up? Well, um, first of all, Adam, you are a genius. Thanks. And, um, Anderson, you are so funny. You do not get enough credit for what you do. No, he does. That goes without saying. That <laughs> but, um, the reason I'm calling is because, um, uh, I don't know how long ago it was the show with Nelly Furtado. Wow. Mm -hmm. A while ago. Uh, yeah. 
And, um, sorry, I just walked up the stairs, so I'm winded. All right. Um, uh, sorry. I was talking to you about, um... Where do you, where you, you live in a lighthouse? How many stairs do <laughs> you, you go up? I Washington. live in a big house. Um, live in the Washington Monument? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I was talking about an experience that I'd had on a cruise ship when I worked there. Mm-hmm. And, um... I had gotten involved with a guy that it was a bad sexual experience, and I was asking Drew about STDs. Well, um, Drew, it was like the end of the show, and we didn't have time to go into it, but Drew, you asked me what was up with me, and it was just as if you were reaching through the phone and grabbing a hold of me. Huh. And uh, well, I just wanted to thank you because now I'm in therapy. And oh, good. Oh, I thought he like gave you the finger or something. No, no. I mean, he, he, I mean, he shook you by the lapels. He shook <laughs> some sense into you? He was just asking me in such a direct way that um, it really had a, a big effect on me. Mm -hmm. What would uh, you, what'd you do on this cruise ship? I was a massage therapist. Oh, oh man. I trained to remember this. Sort of do, yeah. too. What, what was the route? Did it go everywhere? Um, it went to Alaska and the Caribbean. It's got to be a decent gig. I, how, how much are you working as a massage therapist on the cruise ship? Uh, I was working 11, tw 12 hours a day. Wow. Massaging five and a half days a week. 12 hours a day. Yeah, it was. It was. That's got to be. It's going to be rough. It was. And, and, and not massaging uh, 25 year olds. And, and who's huh? paying? I mean, who pays for the massage? Uh, the the passenger. How much is it? Uh. It was like uh, like 35 for a half an hour or like 70 for an hour. Oh, but so they a, cut you a deal on the hour. It was a 50-minute hour. Ah. <laughs> this is so better just to get the half hour, wouldn't it? Uh, well, I, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Yeah. It was like... Once it, it in a while, there's a few time. of these. I, I swear to Christ, I went, I went to a strip club in Vegas, and it's like, how much for the... Uh, they're like, well, it's... Uh, I think it was, uh, it's 20 per lamp dance, or you can get four for 100. And I was like, I, I swear to Christ, this was the deal. I was like, uh, like, uh, what's in your baker's, like, if you guys did a baker's dozen, what, what would that be, 11? Like, like, really? <laughs> baker's dozen, 11, 11, 11, 20 dollars for a lap dance, or, blah, 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 or 200 dollars for two, blah, 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 blah worked out to be 70 if I sold them a hot pack or something. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's got to be, that's got to be rough. It but was. I went home with an injury before my, uh, before my contract was up. Mm-hmm. Wow. But, uh, now, would you, would you, would you get any hot guys in there? Yeah, a couple. And, and, did, did, did was that exciting for you? Yeah. Yeah. But I've, I'm, I've got really bad judgment because of the, my past. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you had you gotten involved with one of your clients? Yes. Uh, well, it's not okay. really a client if the guy's taking a cruise and you're giving him a massage. Yeah, but she's a, you're a licensed massage. I was a licensed massage. That, that's a violation of her license. No, no, I know. But that's, who cares? It's like being a chiropractor. Yeah. No, no one gives a crap about that. Uh, it's not that's a real a, job. Uh, if she cares about her job. Let me ask you this. How long does it take to become licensed as a massage therapist? Uh, at the time that I was taking my test, it was nine months program. Why? And, and how much, like, uh, if you're working at a spa or something, maybe you don't, maybe it varies from spa to spa, but if the spa treatment is like, you know, 80, 90 bucks for an hour, mm -hmm. how much of that do you see? Um, well, in the salon, at, on the ship, very little, like eight and a half percent. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, but we we got a fifty dollar retainer for a week, and um, uh, eight and a half percent of our sales and services. Well, I, I was just talking about this to somebody because uh, you know the ladies love the massages uh -huh. and they just don't like paying for the massages, right. and so it's like it's like ninety bucks for. for you know they go down to Burke Williams, you know they get an hour's worth of whatever. It's like a hundred bucks, and they're like, well, you got to tip the person, and the thing is, is like. Why do you got to tip them? Yeah. They're getting 90 bucks. No, they don't get that. The, the business yeah. gets that. They don't get that. And I'm like, 
Well, isn't that between them and the business? Like, why do I got to step in and compensate for the business that's taking the lion's share of the money? Yeah. Like, I'm paying 90 bucks for an hour. Let the goddamn business give them 30 bucks instead of 9 bucks, right. and then I wouldn't have to give them the 20 bucks to make it up. Well, they should come to your house for right. 40 bucks. Right. right. Well, on the ship, most of my clients tipped me. So. Man, what would they give you, about 20% or 15%? All right. So uh, you got involved on the ship. Mm-hmm. Who would you get involved with, a client? Uh, yeah, he was a construction worker. Oh, yeah. Really? From <laughs> Seattle. and Cruising, huh? He even He stole my bracelet as a souvenir at the end. Yeah, that's a souvenir. Like, because I was so drunk and I was in his cabin. And yeah. he, like, slid it into the drawer while I was c- mostly unconscious. All right. Well, you're lucky because most, most of those guys take, like, an ear. Yeah, for, for a souvenir, and they wear it like a necklace and what, what do you mean for a souvenir, Stephanie? What do you think he was doing? What do you think he did with that? I don't know, but... Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't think he would have sold it and <laughs> taken the money? Maybe. Uh, he Well, he asked me if I was going to take his clothes because I had worn them to my cabin and then returned them later. And he asked me if I was... He thought I was going to keep his clothes as a souvenir. So I just assumed... How's your therapy going now? But, um, it's going okay. Um, it's kind of slow going. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I think I've um, made a lot of progress with Great. judgment. Yeah. Well, All keep, right, it, keep it up, baby. Thank you. Keep yeah. Hey, Drew, why don't you reach through the radio and shake some sense in there again? Good job. Ooh. You know what I'm talking about? These jobs where you pay a ton of money for an hourly yeah. wage, and then, oh, no, you got a tip. Yeah. Now, they don't see any of that. Yeah. It's like, uh, uh, is, but isn't that between them and their business? I don't know. You would think. I'm just a prick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you, you become a like certified massage therapist in like six months or nine months, maybe under a year. Yeah. And then you're going to people's houses and you're making seventy five bucks an hour. It's crazy. Uh, but is a is a is a carpenter you're making fifteen twenty bucks an hour if you've been doing it for ten years. It, and driving a truck full of tools. As a physician, once you pay all your oh. credit, you're making about seventy five bucks an hour. I, yeah, what, what's the, with the massage? I mean, why, why do I got to tip someone who's getting ninety bucks an hour with no materials? Yeah. They, they used uh, eight cents worth of lubriderm on my back. Chris. Yeah. You're eighteen. Uh, yeah. What's up? Well, like, me and my girlfriend have been living together at her mom's house for like three weeks now. And I went to my mom's house, which is about 300 miles away, and I was there for about a week. Yeah. And my girlfriend said she had a dream, and she woke up masturbating. Okay. That's nice. And I was wondering what's up with that. Um, uh, normal? She said, like, before, because we went to Job Corps, and... Uh-oh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's prison with shovels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. You know how uh, junior college... Is high school with ashtrays? Yes. Job Corps, prison with a flathead shovel. Nice. That's that's what it is. Actually, it wasn't that bad. It was like... I, I know, but it's four people. It's like, they give you a choice. You, either, you're either going to the can or you got to go to the Job Corps. Yeah. Yeah. See, the, the reason why I went is because I screwed up in high school. Right, right. It's just yeah. for screw-ups. Right. Yeah. All right, what's the question? Well, like... We would come to my dad's house on the weekends, and we'd sleep in the same bed together. And we've been together now for like a year. And we were there together pretty much all our whole relationship. Where we met was there. And she, before she would have dreams like, and wake up like that, she would have dreams that somebody was doing something to her, but she could never see who it was, right? Mm-hmm. But the dream that she just had, she saw me in the dream. And she woke up thinking I was there, and she was playing with herself, and she looked over to see if I was there because she woke up believing that I was there. Yeah, all right. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's good. I I had a dream uh, that I had hooves once. <laughs> and you looked at your feet? I had hooves. No, your, your, your feet were there. there. Your feet were there. They were there. Who cares? They were there. All right. Uh, okay, Chris. Chris, you're just describing. You, you guys are fine. The scarier part is that you two met at the Job Corps. Yeah. Why was she in there? She was in there because she got bad in the meth. And uh, okay. 
That's my boyfriend was beating her and what? There, there you go. go. Oh. That's the stuff to focus on. <laughs> that, she, that's more serious than these crazy little dreams. I've, I've pretty much all gotten her over it. I mean, it took a couple of months, but I got her over it and got oh. her to come out and be her. It was like she was afraid to be herself, and I finally got her to be herself. Good, good man. Yeah. Good man. However, Chris, you're completely deluding yourself if you think you can change someone. Completely. Well, she's off the meth. Mm -hmm. Still smoking pot every day. Nope. You're not abusive, right? No. Not at all. I've never. She's never. never even she's never cheated. It. Huh? She's never cheated. Nope. Neither one of us. We've been uh, in love since like the third week we've been together. Which was three weeks ago. No, this was that was a year ago. A year ago. I just gonna predict. What was it? The way she dug the fire breaks that really initially attracted you to her. I don't know. It was. I saw her like the first day she got the job corps, and I thought she was absolutely stunning. And I said to my friend that I would have her one day, and <laughs> ever since then I've been in love with her. I picture like uh, this is like what Beavis would say to Butthead: "She will be mine." All right, so that's good. That's good. And now you're uh, you're living the dream because you're living at her mom's house. Oh well, yeah, just for now until All I right. can, we can get jobs. Well, if if she jobs. is true, issues with my dad. And right. my if she's truly an addict, about. though, that will resurface, and you've got to have to do something about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Chris, let me give you some advice because I'm a genius. Do not get her pregnant. No. No. I had that uh, scare once and she had a miscarriage. We'll never, ever try that even. No. Right. You're, try, try, you're, what was it you tried? Well, like, when we first got together, we talked about having a kid, and then it, like, came up, and she's on the depot. Good. And she got off and didn't tell me. Uh, right. And now she's back on again. Uh, good. So Make, she was off, you know. All right, all right. Make sure she's on. Make sure she tells you. Don't get her pregnant. You two both uh, get jobs. Fight to keep them. And, we uh, both got jobs lined up. Right. Good. What do you got? What do you got going? I'm going to be working at Home Depot. I'm starting at 12 an hour. Good and times. She's uh, going to be an administrative assistant, and uh -huh. she's going to start at like 15 an hour. Fabulous. Where are they we'll putting you? And we'll be out on our own. Good. Where are they putting you in the Home Depot? Um, electrical department. That's All right. When I went to Job Corps, I was studying to be an electrician. All right. Uh -huh. you, you know what an LB is? Yeah. All right. Romex? Yeah. All right. You know the difference between the variable Romex and the uh, above ground Romex? Yes. Okay. All right. Good times. All right. All hey. right. Oh, hey what? Hey, hey, nothing. I wanted to tell you that Crank Yankers is awesome. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Got a whole new uh, season, whole bunch of episodes yeah, coming out I real love it. soon. I watch it every every time it's on. What is my good? Thanks, there, buddy. Oh, we haven't uh, haven't launched a new season of Crank I'm Yankers curious, yet. I'm curious what that puppet's gonna look like. Or as my family call it, uh, <laughs> still doing the Yank. Uh, the puppet show? Crank? Uh, no, no, it's better. It's the yeah. Yanker Danker? The, uh... <laughs> I gotta, you know what? I gotta, get my, I gotta get my whole fame like a little laminated cheat sheet they can keep in their wallet. Your name like, uh, and How's, uh... How's Dr., uh... <clears throat> Drew doing? Is he doing all right? Is he doing okay? You guys, uh... Still doing the... Love line? <laughs> it's, uh, still on the... Radio. And uh, the uh, Yank, I mean, uh, typo. Let's, I can't make that crack, first word. Crack, crack Yank? Crack, crack Yakker's doing? Is that on? You know, it's funny when you talk to your parents, too, or any of your family members. You talk to them, they're like, still working on that Crank Yanker show? Yep, yeah, <laughs> and 22 more episodes. Then you talk to them four days later. What's yeah. going on, son? Nothing. Still doing that TV? Yeah, Dad. It's been 72 hours. They haven't pulled the plug on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's talk to uh, Danielle, who's 36. Danielle? Hi. What's up? Um, I've been married to my husband for um, a little over a year. Mm-hmm. And um, he, very shortly after we got married, um, he started, well, he, he kind of suffers from mental illness. What, what illness is that? Um, paranoid schizophrenia. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't actually know it was so bad when I married him because um, he would go to the hospital and then he would tell me after he, you know, went and did his days in the hospital that he went in there to escape me. Uh. And he wanted me to know where he was so I knew he wasn't cheating on me and that way I wouldn't cheat on him and that he told me he used to lie to them and tell them that how sick he was, but he really wasn't. Right. And then after we got married, he confessed to me that he really was. A lot of, I've had schizophrenics do that kind of weird manipulation. I'm sorry? So they, telling, they, telling them they're worse than they are? They claim they're not schizophrenic. They're pretending to be schizophrenic so they can get disability and things like that. Mm -hmm. 
Well, he would tell them that he wanted to kill himself, and then they would put him in the hospital, and he'd just, like, take a rest and stay in the VA yeah. hospital because he was in the army. Yeah, Danielle. Yes. He wanted to kill himself. That's why he went in the hospital, okay? That's what he would say. Yeah. That's what he wanted to do to himself. Well, but if he really wanted to do it, wouldn't he have done it? No. Exactly, yeah. Why not? Why not? Because he, it, it, people have to get, you know, it progresses. We save people's lives all the time by putting them in the facilities before we, they do it. We or I do? No, I mean, our, our Thank you. Danielle? You do. You do. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Well, as it is right now, um, he's, I don't know if he's having another episode. Mm -hmm. But after, shortly after we got married, he bought a boat, and he started, like, staying on the boat all the time, and I had no way of getting to him. It was like a houseboat. How was he able to afford that? It was, actually, I bought it. A friend, my best friend. Oh, he just bought a houseboat? It was very inexpensive, believe it or not. It was $1,000. Oh. Yeah. Man, I'm picturing that boat. <laughs> yeah. Jesus It's a homemade God. wooden boat. It's pretty cool, though. It's kind of like a floating room. Anyway, he just kind of like started taking off, and he pretty Hold much. Hold on, I'm picturing. I'm picturing a floating room, I'm and I, it doesn't sound great to me. I'm picturing Ted Kaczynski's hut on a on a floating mat yeah. mattress. That's here's 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 basically what I'm picturing. I'm picturing a, a Sears gardening shed on a Pilates mat. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's what I'm picturing. Okay. It's a nice escape for him. Yeah, sure. Daniel, what, what, why are you so disconnected? Where from where do you park the uh, houseboat? It was parked in a gorgeous area, a really beautiful, beautiful scenic place. That just the view alone was like so serene and it's, it's so in the, wonderful. But it's in the water. It's in water, yeah. And he basically stayed out there for the whole summer. I, he just he just gets to park it out in the lake. Yeah, it's not a lake. It's the bay. We live in a bay area. He doesn't, doesn't have a dock he has to pay for. Nope. The police don't sort of get on it for squatting? Nope, it's totally illegal. Yep. And Is it he, anchored? So, uh, yeah, it was on a mooring, yes. Mooring out there. Okay. Yeah, I, I, anchor mooring. Scene. Hold on a second. Does it, does it sound weird that you could just sort of uh, take some plywood and put some uh, galvanized screws in them and then just uh, launch it out into the ocean and uh, tie it off to a pylon and, hey, he's living on it. Yeah. Like, I, All right, well, that, that... Hold on a second. I, out here, I swear to Christ, you bring a goddamn Frisbee on the beach, you get arrested. Yeah. Real, and, you know, it was like in front of million-dollar houses, you know. It was... The view was really spectacular. All right, well, I, I'm there's glad just, you... There's something wrong All right, here. All right, but be that as may, it, it's, he, he's very seriously ill. And... Do you mean for taking off on me for the whole summer? I mean for isolating on a boat by himself. And well, he, maybe he's writing a novel get, or something. Parents get afraid that's isolated. That, that is the Ted Kaczynski move, is to go out in a beautiful cabin in beautiful <laughs> surroundings and sit there and be send, psychotic. Send bombs. Yeah. All right, he, he, Danielle, he's really, really a sick guy, and he needs to take his medication. Yeah. He is, but he, I'm not sure because he recently just started taking um, Respiridone. Yeah. And why'd, you, why'd you marry this guy? Honestly, um, we're, I live in New York, and we got married, like, right after the whole World Trade Center. It was, I mean, I loved him because I lived with him for a few years, but it was after, right after the World Trade Center thing, and it was, like, a really stressful time. All right, I, 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 I got an idea. Uh -huh. when, the, uh, when the tide, you f figure out when the tide goes out, and then just slide in there and uh, cut the rope. <laughs> And just he'll just sail off into the horizon. And he'll never see him again. He'll be fine. No, he's the always fish. He'll live off the land. Well, no, he can taking his medication. He can be fine, but he's really got some serious stuff that's right. got to be dealt with. And what do you do? Do you work? I'm becoming a yoga instructor. I had an injury that I was recovering from for a while. Yeah. And I'm just finally, thank God, all better. So I'm going to be moving on that. Yeah. What, what was the injury? Um, I, had, I actually had an injury I received from him. Uh huh. What did he do to you? He hit you with an oar. Yeah. He um he he has violent tendencies too, and I mean the real thing is I must be pretty sick because I've been with him like for so yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. What what do, I, what do you guys do for money? I I don't understand. Well, he right now isn't working. He is uh he's like a, a fisherman. Oh, that explains what you do for money. Oh, I see. Yeah. You're not working for money. <laughs> okay. Well, now it all, that's all tied up in a neat little bow, Drew. I was, I was picture, trying to picture in my mind what they did to earn their money, but I, I, I now realize they're unemployed. They don't work for money. Yeah. I see. That's all very clear now. He's a, of course he's a fisherman. That's how he, he's, he, <laughs> he can't around. help being a fisherman. And, like, he's not here right now. Uh, okay, but listen, seriously, what do you guys do for money? Um, well, he usually works, and I was working, but um, both of us happen to not right now. At this and what, what is he able to do? Wait a minute. 
What do you do for money? What do I do? What do you two do for money? We usually both do what? What do you do for money? Right now we don't have any. So what do you do for survival, for living expenses? Well, he fishes. What do you do? <laughs> uh, Danielle, <laughs> you can't answer that question much, even. How what, do, you are, do you have a mental condition, Danielle? Oh, yeah. I so, must. Yeah, you must. He fishes? How much money does he make off his fishing industry? Well, actually, it used to be good, but it's not good at all right oh, now, okay. and especially in the winter. Okay, I, I, you have one opportunity to answer this question. Okay. Okay. What do you do to sustain yourself now? I work for my friend. Bookkeeping. Okay. Yeah. That, that's that's okay. all you had to say, baby. We used to work. We used to fish. <laughs> okay. Yeah, poor thing. Oh, my God. This is crazy. Uh, Danielle. Yeah. And I, I, it's like on one hand, she has to be nuts. On the other hand, she readily admits she's nuts. But then she wants to go into yoga instruction, which means she's nuts again. Why, why, are, all this, why are those broads baddie? The yoga. Guys out on the houseboat. <sighs> He's got to take his reality, medication. You know what reality is a hard sell for Danielle. She can't. Oh, man, is yeah. it a tough sell? Yeah. And she didn't. And the thing that's interesting is, is she's not interested in being with a guy who's going to who's going to peddle any reality around yeah. her. All yeah. she has to do is hook up with uh, crazy Gordon's fisherman out there, <laughs> flo floating in the uh, Kaczynski shack in the bay, and he never asks any questions. He's yeah. just off. He weaves yarns for her. Just spins tails. That's right. She takes them. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I don't know what the answer is. He's got to take his meds. you got to get into reality. Yeah. We'll be back. Hey, Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. All right. Let's uh, get back to the phone. Billy owns here, Drew. All right. Speak to uh, Paige. She's 19. Paige. Hi. Hey. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Okay. Um, I tried speed and like 10 months ago um to lose weight i lost the weight but i find myself still going back at it so uh, i want to know if i'm addicted to it if yeah like i want to know the side effects first of all are you snorting it no smoking it oh boy why why smoking it christian addict I, I'm, I haven't used any drugs. I'm not a. I don't drink. I don't use drugs. But what? I just tried this. So I'm scared of snorting it or anything. So the best way of smoking it. And that's w what I was. You don't consider you know. speed a drug? Yeah, I do definitely. But I'm not like snorting it or injecting it or anything. Oh, yeah. by the way. And I'm a smoker too. So. Smoking speed seems more egregious than snorting it. Even really. Oh, oh my God! You got a much higher dose. Much higher. Really? I mean, much faster. Much more intense uh, effect on the brain. Well, I mean, smoking coke is, smoking cocaine is much more, much more intense than snorting it. Well, here's the deal with the speed. Speed, unfortunately, is... I'm just smoking speed. I'm not really, I'm not one of those druggies uh, that calls the show with the marijuana and yeah, whatnot. The speed, the speed addiction is very serious and very hard to stop and very hard to treat. What you can expect, unfortunately, is brain damage from speed. It causes chronic mood problems. Even uh, if you're smoking it? Yeah, just smoking it. And memory disturbance. I don't know if you notice the memory problems yet, but those can kind of be pr permanent. So A need, little bit, yeah. Yeah, so you need to stop now. How and often are you doing it? Um, Probably like four times. I quit for about three months. Well, here, addiction is defined by being unable... About, by its consequences, in other words, you have things happen in your life as a result of the drug use. No, no. There will be. And, oh, okay. And that you can't stop even when you want to. That's addiction. How much is the speed? It's 20, 40, and that's, I don't know, anything above that. So, you need to do something about this page. It's not going to stop by itself. This needs treatment. Well, how often are you doing it? You only have to um, do speed three times a week to be pretty severely addicted. Yeah, I get like a 20, it'll last me for a week, but I'll keep it and do it like a day two days later three days later so now when do you when do you do it do it in the morning do it in the afternoon yeah in the morning so i won't eat the day you do it in the morning uh-huh and will you feel the the high how long no. do you feel the high for i don't feel a high it's just i still like doing stuff and that's one of the things too like I'll, when I, whenever i'm on it i'll get everything done that i need to on my agenda that day like not eating you're not I, eating, like doing errands. You feel like doing something all yeah. the time. You're not lazy. You're, I don't know how I it is. Give me some of this speed. <laughs> the Coral weird. family needs a little speed. 
And uh, so if you smoke some in the morning, let's say 10 in the morning, how would you feel at 5 in the afternoon? I get... It's okay until like eight, nine o'clock. I'll get a bad headache. Bad headache. And I'll get moody. And then can you could you go can you go to bed that night? At first, no. But when I first started, no, not at all. I'd just be up lit. But now I'm going to bed. Yeah. Even even though you you smoked it ten hours earlier. Mm -hmm. speed, speed is very long acting. I, I know, but you know, smoking it doesn't smoking it kind of push you through you a little faster. A little bit, but none mm, affects the stick around. But there's no high off of it, none at all for me. All I don't right. know if I've used that it. Maybe even <laughs> maybe worse. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So here's the thing. Can you can you stop? No. Yeah, I've erased the people's numbers from my phone book, but I find myself just getting it back. Okay. Finding Listen, people page, again. Page. You're going to have to come to terms with the fact that you're addicted to a severely addictive and dangerous drug. You are. That's the way it is. What's with the eating problem? Eating problem? It's just, I don't know. I feel like I'm getting fat if I'm not. All right. That's a, that's a second issue. issue. And I'm not issue. fat. I'm 5'8", and I weigh 140. You're fat. True, please. Yeah, well, he, here's the thing. Uh, you, you're going to have to probably address that issue as well. Yeah, but at uh, some in, point. In the course of recovery that'll that'll get done all right baby have a good time so right listen you're gonna have to get this treated page you really do all right go ahead over to Los Encinas that's so we got an addiction program over there she's calling from Pasadena yep. Amber yeah you're 21 yes. what's up um well I've been with my boyfriend for quite a while now like six years mm -hmm. or well we're going on six years um and like when I was 15 and he was uh, 18, like, our sex life was great. It was kind of like, I don't know, like a bad thing, naughty thing to do. And now it just seems like we haven't had sex in a month. Yeah. And I, I mean, he's raring to go, but I'm just... Huh? Well, not. maybe this relationship's sort of winding down for you. Well, I I love him a lot. It's not like I want to be with anybody else, but... I know. Th those I are feel, the number... I feel totally asexual. I mean, it's terrible. Those are the number one and two answers we give from the... Uh, relationships that have run their course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're 15. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you think where your head was at at 15. Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> and now you're 21. Right. And you're not the same person. You're not in the same place. It's time It's time to wrap this thing up, I'm afraid. The problem uh -huh. is you, you can't imagine being without him. You're so enmeshed in this relationship. You right. can't... You can't conceive of ending it. You can't but, succeed of being outside of it. Yet your body... Your body can imagine being without yes, it. Yes, your body is telling you something loud and clear, which is done. And he's not done anything. You're not angry at him? No. It's, it's kind of like well, we finally know we're going to be together. No. You know what I mean? Where before it was kind of like he didn't know what it, where he wanted to go or what he wanted to do. And I was constantly sort of falling around, you know, and now it seems Wait, like... Wait, what, what? Well, now it just seems like he's... We're both comfortable with each other, and he knows that he wants to be with me, and all of a sudden now I'm just like, uh... So if you're not chasing him, you're not interested? Yeah. He, I love him to death. I mean, he's he's attractive. I just... He kept you, I, he kept you on just, edge for three years, wondering if the relationship... Six years. Six years, wondering if the relationship was going to work, work out? Well, I mean, no. I mean, he left, and he went traveling in Central America for nine months, and then, and then he moved out to Seattle. So you, you have to have a guy who's not available. That's the only way it works for you. Well, this is the only guy I've ever been with. I mean, it, when I mean, it's pretty, you should pretty clearly set up a an alcoholic or unavailable dad thing here. Where's your dad? Um, he's at home. Uh huh. <laughs> he's in Iowa. He's in, in Iowa. Iowa. I just moved from there. All right. Was he available when you were growing up? Yeah. Oh yeah. Didn't lose anybody when you were young. No. Not not drinking. No boozers. No, I guess I guess it's more like I don't feel like it's I can't wind my mind down. Like when I have sex, I feel gross. Hmm. Having sex. Why? I, I don't I don't feel comfortable. I don't let him go down on me. Oh, nothing I, nothing happened to you when you were younger. Um, I've never been abused. I've been told like really strange things to me by my mother. Like I mean, what? I, I've. Just weird things. She told me one thing about my dad, so I've been sort of scared about my dad my whole life, kind of. What? He's never laid a hand on me. But it's kind of a weird relationship with my mother and I. Like, we're not exactly... What did she tell you? Um, she said that, you know, 
we were going on a camping trip when I was like seven. Oh, ramping trip? Yeah, uh -oh. and she told me like she didn't trust my father to take me along on this trip and to watch out that she didn't that she thought that other people would think that like he was molesting me or something. It was just terrible. It was like she was jealous. She didn't want us to go on the trip. He never laid a hand on me, but like my whole life I've been kind of like, oh my God, you know, every time he hugs me, I'm like, would he do something like that or? What is your, does your mom have a mental illness? She's weird. She, she, does she drink? She do any drugs? I think she, she did a lot of drugs in her younger days. Okay, so she's an addict. So I think she's got some <laughs> mental. Still at age seven, uh, Listen, take this iron skillet and uh, this spork and keep it in your keep it in your belt. And uh, if this well, guy comes at you, you stab him. Like, uh, let's be fair here. It's the opposite of what we normally get with these women, which is... Uh, right. He, how, what do you mean he didn't put his penis in you? How dare you suggest such a thing? Right. Just when the, and it, it's, it's interesting. It's almost equally as damaging. And, and now that she feels anything sexual with a male is dirty and awful and uh, distrustful. And that's, huh? that's now translated yeah. into a relationship. All right. Well, there's issues here, baby. Yeah, it's it's hard, and I, it, you know, Gabe tells me I should go to a therapist. Yeah, we're with you. And I and I went to one, but I just I don't know. Maybe she wasn't a good one. No, go, no. For, go. You, you just weren't. You weren't. You didn't. You weren't ready. You didn't open up. You didn't. Yeah. Whatever. You were skeptical. You well, wanted to get was, in. I it. I kind of opened up, and she was just like, uh, -huh, uh -huh, okay. That's all she's gonna that's do. That's all Amber. they do. But she, you did, get, she was just there to listen. She didn't really suggest. Yeah, Amber. That's all Amber. they do. You, yeah. you once once somebody's listened to you for about five years, then you'll be able, you'll some of the stuff will start making sense to you. She's I, I not was, supposed to say anything back to you. You know, my favorite part is this. Uh, I love the depictions of therapy. Yeah. Like. It, on TV, you mean? No. I mean, the people that call this show. Oh. Especially the women, because women are women have this gene where they're able to hear things that they think <laughs> that the other person is, is thinking. Right. <laughs> your, yeah. your wife has this, by the way. Yeah. But they, they, they sit down and they go, I talked to this therapist, and I, you know, I started telling her my problems, and she told me I was fat and stupid. Yeah. <laughs> And that my foo foo smelled. Or she said, she said you're a real pain in the butt. And I told her what my dad did to me, and she said I deserved it because I was fat and right. stupid. And I'm like, I know they didn't say that. I know that's what you were saying to yourself, and that you're hearing. And this is all the good, all the excuse you need not to continue in this process that frightens you. But th th don't put words, don't put words in their mouth. Listen, therapy is about you going to therapy. You really, you really could take a uh, a mannequin and put it there, or worse, uh, Keanu Reeves <laughs> could just be sitting there as your therapist, and uh, you could just talk talk to him and look at look at those eyes spinning around like pinwheels, and uh, you'd still get something out of it. That's all it is. I don't even let my therapist talk. Oh, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that for a second. I'm just a ramble, ramble, oh, ramble, yeah. ramble. Blah, 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 And he's like, well, in my experience, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, well, getting back to your point, blah, 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 blah. be fair, blah, 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 high school football, blah, 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 Loveline, man. I was over there. Forget about that phone number. No. No. No lightning round tonight. I'm tired, but tomorrow night, uh, that's a different night. Let's go tomorrow night. Uh, blah. 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 Um, I was wondering if it was normal for a guy to be able to have multiple orgasms. What do you mean by multiple orgasms? Well... Multiple orgasms means pow, 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 pow. Continuous well, orgasm. Well, like, like when me and my boyfriend have sex, like, he'll come and then he'll be able to, like, keep on going. Right. Like that, so he has, he has separate orgasms sequentially. Hold on a yeah. second. Hold on. True. I think we have to define multiple orgasm for yeah. woman, yes. for women, and then use a separate set of criteria to define it for men. Uh, I, I would disagree because women can have 
the sequential orgasm, like she can have three sequential orgasms in a sexual encounter, mm -hmm. or she can be multi-orgasmic, which is she never has a refractory. Multi-orgasmic means you never have a refractory period of any type. It's just pow, 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 pow. What? Where? Where is? But but. Whereas there's no male that's physically constructed to be multi-orgasmic. Without a refractory period, of some period. They, I, can, ha they can have sustain their erection and continue going, I, I but there think, will be a finite period of time in all cases during which it is impossible for a male to ejaculate But again. I think for the sake of argument, we have to... We have to use that label of multi-orgasmic for males, for a guy who can maintain the same erection and have multiple well, orgasms. That's your same boner, different jizz. That's it. Same boner, new jizz. Yes, yeah. thank you. So that's it. That's good enough. Uh, even, even new boner. Even new boner. Any guy who can bust his nut three times having sex, I'm gonna, we'll just call multi-orgasmic. Uh, well, that's normal. Don't get all caught that, up that, in that. That is normal. And that's what well, it's 18 normal for an 18-year-old yeah, guy. 18-year-olds can do that. All right. Okay, and um, I also have another question. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, is rawness a symptom of, like, a latex allergy, or is that just, like, from having... No, that, that's him uh, pounding you like a, a veal chop for... An for, abalone. For, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, a veal chop? <laughs> He's pounding you like a cutlet, is what I'm saying. I see. Like okay. a veal cutlet. I didn't mean chop. Okay. I mean a, a veal cutlet. He's pounding you like a cutlet. For for an entire evening, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Too All much. Right. Too That's long. fine. And tell him, ouch. That's okay. That you say, ouch. He should. Say How that. many orgasms does this guy need to have? Um, like at least four. No, he's stealing them from Adam now. Wow. And and is he is he switching up condoms each time? Yeah, he has to, or else it slips off. Right. Yeah, so he's good. Four condoms every time you guys have a sesh, huh? Um, yeah, sometimes Jesus, why. Jesus Christ, guys, like, he's like, if he's filling up landfills and stuff. <laughs> the fountain. I mean, four times. Yeah, good times, 18. Nice, huh? Mm. Mm. Oh, youth. I, I don't know if I could do it now. I, I, see, my, my thing Are is, like, high? I could do it, I just don't want to. No, That's the way it feels no, like to yeah, me. No, 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 no. No? Your, your soul will emerge. So some of your <laughs> ventricle would pop out. Uh, wait a minute. Josie. That's it, Josie. Really? You need more. You want to say Jose for your, your bladder would invert or something. <laughs> Josie? Yeah? You're 18? Yeah. What's up? Um, it's because my boyfriend, he smokes a lot and he drinks a lot. Uh huh. Weed? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah? And I'm trying to make him stop, but every time I tell him to stop, he starts tripping on me. Does he want to stop? Um, well, I've asked him to stop, you know, for me. Does he want to stop? <laughs> well, uh, to I guess not. Okay. Nobody no. ever answers our questions. There's only they? two ways he, 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 you could have an impact on his using. One is you can leave. You can tell him if he doesn't stop using drugs, you're going to leave. Drugs and alcohol. <laughs> and then leave when he doesn't stop. And that might catch his attention. The other is, as I've said earlier this evening, for you to go to Al-Anon. Sometimes the partner going to a 12-step program themselves and getting a sponsor and getting the steps, you, you grow enough that you grow away from their BS, and they start sensing your departure, and it catches their attention. They sometimes they are willing to make change. How old is this guy? He's 21. Those are your only two possibilities. Does he work around metal? Me? He. Uh, no, he doesn't work. He just got out of jail. Oh, All right. Good times. Sounds like a delight. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to lose this guy. Well, like, I told him that I what wanted, to, like... For? Come on. Okay, yeah. What was he in jail for? Uh, I'd rather not say. Well, come on, tell us. Uh, well, it's kind of like a... Like he murdered someone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nothing but, uh, I don't know. Yeah, the mm -hmm. guy, it was, he was framed. Why yeah. is he out so uh, early? Well, he was framed. Mm -hmm. Why is he? Why? Why is he out already? I don't know. Maybe, like, they... Well, I'm not sure if that's it, but, uh... <laughs> you know what I love about it? You got a sister. I love this Josie. She does not sweat the details. How old is he? 21. 21, is that what Yeah, why, why is he out for murder at age 21? Well, he assaulted somebody. Okay. That's it. He assaulted somebody. So he didn't murder them? Mm-mm. But he was uh, trying to murder them? Yeah. An attempted murder. All right. Josie, uh, what's the matter with you? You stupid? 
No. Well, why are you with this guy? Well, I've been trying, like, to break up with him, you know, but every time I try, he, like, tells me, you know, that he loves me and that he'll do anything to, like, get me back. There's no cookies in my box. Well, yeah, he, but he can stop smoking and doing drugs and smoke a pot and drinking, and that'll be that. All right, and uh, get a job, maybe? Yeah. And do not let this guy get you pregnant. Oh, my God, oh, no. 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 What are you doing for protection? Yeah, it's my sister's pregnant. She's 19. <sighs> yeah, but what are you doing for for protection? Um, well, I tell the guy to wear condoms. No, you get on the pill. <laughs> you get on the pill. I tell the guys to wear condoms? Well, my boyfriend. Uh, oh. Listen, you got to get on birth control. Are you Mexican? Uh, no. What are you? Um, from here, but my parents are, like, from Guatemala. All right, good enough. You're going to get pregnant. Uh, How old is your oldest sis sibling? Uh, she's 19. That's your oldest sister? Yeah. How old's your mom? Uh, she's 35. There you go. Good time. 16. All right, you're way sister. overdue. Yeah. You're going to get pregnant. Do not get pregnant. So that's like all that. these Latin countries, yeah. are. that's why they're destroyed. Everyone's pregnant at uh, 17. Adam, you could have a 22-year-old. It's good times. <laughs> Imagine that. Oh, man. 22-year-old kicking my ass. Uh, horrible. Oh, my God. Busting a nut five times while this old man was trying to get one off. <laughs> Mocking him with his gallon of semen. I will uh, take a break, and uh, we'll come back, wrap it up. Well, that just about puts another episode of Love Line to bed. Thank you for listening tonight. Uh... Tune in again tomorrow night. This is Dr. Dre here in the meantime. On behalf of Adam Carolla saying, uh-huh. Is he addicted to anything else? Or had he been? Um, just to drugs and porn. <laughs> this has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.